This is Nigel Slater from 3DP. This is Matt Rankin, the Solutions Architect of 3DP. So Matt, um, we, uh, we get a lot of questions about this magnificent thing we have called NPAP or Network Performance Analysis Tool and uh, what sits behind it, IAP Collector. And I just wanted to throw some of the questions out there and, and for you to give us some answers, just so there's a little bit more understanding of what, what the magic really is, what it does. So uh, yeah, let's, get, let's kick into it. So first of all, I want to ask you about the, the things sitting behind you there. What are, what, are, what are we looking at behind you, those red boxes? So behind me are intelligent endpoints from 3DP. I've got a couple different models back there. Um, but really, that's kind of what we'll be talking about today is, is one of the tools that comes on those red, red boxes. OK, cool. So um, and these, these red boxes are communications devices. They've got different technology in them, your choice, that sort of stuff. Yeah, different radios, but it's a full-blown Linux operating system underneath. Cool. Okay. So, does does this box it, are the tools that we've created for it? Do they do we plug them into it? Does it run on them natively? Like when when you talk about our some of our software tools, our software applications, um, and particularly IEP Collector that collects this data, where does it live? Right, so all those applications actually run directly on, on the intelligent endpoint. So we've got a different, a whole different host of applications. Some of them are, have to do with taking serial data and turning them into TCP or UDP data. Uh, there's tools for using the GPS antenna that comes on every intelligent endpoint. Um, and then there's stuff like network monitoring or, or, or this IEP collector tool. And really what it's doing is collecting data about your network so that we can we can visualize it later. So so that tool IAP collector, give us a little bit of a an idea of what it actually does. So you, you know you've got your red box, it's running there in the background on that operating system. Um, it's operating as a radio, it's got GPS. What's IAP collector do? So as you're out driving around, you know, you've got uh, IEP is on your vehicle. Um, you enable IEP collector and what it does is it's going to start testing your network and there's a bunch of different ways we can test it, a bunch of different things we can test, things like throughput, uh, latency, uh, we can record environmental data, RF environmental data, you know, it's recording your signal level, your bit rate, what are the other access points that you can see in the area, what channel are they on, um, things like that. And then it takes all those test results and it puts a uh, a GPS tag on them so that later we can take that data and say, okay, when I was at this location, I ran this test and this was my result. Cool. So it, it will actually collect time stamped, geo location stamped data that you you can configure what type of data it collects? Exactly. Yeah. There's different tests that you can enable, disable. You can change the the uh, the parameters on the test, you know. Maybe you don't, you don't want to test your maximum throughput. Maybe you just want to make sure that you've got enough to run your applications. Um, maybe you want to run latency tests every second, every 10 seconds. Um, you know, there's so, all, all a host of different tests that you can try out. So where, while it's collecting that data, is it storing it in a cloud? Like where, where does the data reside once it's been collected? You got right now. It, it's writing all those test result files to a CSV that's hosted locally on the box, and there's actually an advantage to that and not having it sent out because when it's disconnected from your network for whatever reason, like you don't have good coverage, you know we still want to store that data. We want to know what was happening on that device while it was out there disconnected. Yeah, of course, it makes a lot of sense. So the other the other part of this tool that that our customers have heard about is NPAT in a network performance analysis tool. So does that, is that another tool that resides on the intelligent endpoint? How, do, how does that work? How does that fit into the picture? So NPAT is really where you get the, the, the real power of what's going on with Collector. I mean, Collector is very powerful on its own. Uh, NPAT is the part where we take those, those CSV files off of the intelligent endpoint. We transfer them over the network. You can grab them off many different ways to get them off. Um, then we process them back at our office and that's the piece that's going to take all the data that's been collected and put it into a map for you 
And once once we've got that, we, that's where we can start playing with the metrics and start selecting, you know, we want to see what was our throughput, what was our latency. Um, we can aggregate data into tiles. So you're not just seeing individual points across where you drove. You're going to just see an average inside that square, which mm -hmm. both yeah. are both are definitely relevant um, for, for network performance. So, so you're saying that NPAC creates a map. So is that a is that a standard format or is it something that's proprietary to 3DP? It would just be a KMZ file right now, so you can open it up with, with Google Earth. Okay. So when so for this process, um, you're putting the IEP uh, on a vehicle, or it might be just an IP that's operating as that communications device, that endpoint um, for a fleet management system, or you could potentially put it on a light vehicle if you wanted to drive around. Is, is that your normal way of deploying the, the process? Yeah, we've seen it in both, both cases. So we have customers that regularly have these running, these tests running on their network, um, and we're able to provide them with a report every month, with a map every month that you know, gives them an idea of what's going on with their network over you know month to month, week to week, whatever they want. And then there's also the option that, hey, I just want to go out and test one area of my mind. You know, you don't want to pull a haul truck down to go and drive your test area. So we'll put them in a pickup truck, put the antennas on it, and go out and just run the test that way. Gotcha. So how long, how how long or how short would you run tests for? Is is there a is there a any kind of length of time that you run the test that you have to stick to, or is it pretty flexible like that? Very flexible. Um, I've seen tests that go as short as a minute, and I've seen tests go as long as multiple weeks. Um, mm, you know, right. With, with hundreds of thousands of test rows, uh, data that all gets aggregated back. So at the end of the day, it sounds like a fantastic tool. What's the point? Like, where where does this solve problems um, for customers? You know, when when would we choose to use it? What's the outcome? What, what's the benefit that comes from using this sort of um, technology? There's, there's a few different benefits. Um, the first one I always think about is, you know, I, I've got an application and maybe you're having an application issue or maybe you need to commission this application on your network. Um, you can prove that the wireless network is capable of what the application needs. Um, just Proving against application requirements is, is pretty powerful. Um, another area we like to use it in is troubleshooting. You know, you might have an area where you've got an issue. You might drive out there with typical tools and run a throughput test, and the throughput test might come back bad. That's really not helping you solve the problem of what's going on. Right? We're trying to add some context. You know, maybe they're getting poor signal, but maybe you're getting good signal, but you're getting a bad data rate, you know, all these things. So, so it, helps you, it helps you not only identify that there is a problem, but it helps you look for what's causing the problem. Exactly. I mean, you, if you're out there, you probably already know there's a problem. Someone's reported it. But having that extra context of what the problem might be is incredibly powerful. It's, it's really what's going to set, set apart from just, you know, okay, it's bad. I'm out here and it's bad, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, and and I suppose back to an earlier question. This this is performing this not only just on a, a standards based Wi-Fi net, network, but other technologies, mesh client meshing sort of technology like Ragent, LTE. Um, we we don't have any limit limitations there, do we? Correct. Yeah, it's any radio really. Um, obviously, the different there's going to be different metrics you're going to pull back for different radios, different different network types, you know, different things are going to be relevant. And you know, we're, when we run that data back through our processing, we're able to change you know, the legend because a good received strength in the LTE world would be a pretty poor, could be a pretty poor received strength in the Wi-Fi world. For example. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. So when, you know, when a, a customer, and, and I take it it doesn't need to be one of our customers, it can be anyone that has a, has a, a wireless network of any kind that's finding issues, um, has the need, do we, have, do we have to send someone out with this gear to actually do the test or is it something that we can send the equipment out to do by itself if we've got the configuration information and remote access? Yeah, it definitely is something that we can just send out a kit. Um, you know, they can install it as long as they can get the antennas installed, you know, uh, 
in good spots or try and mimic what their fleet does or actually install one straight on their fleet. Um, definitely that's something that we can do and have done before. Awesome. Or if you're a customer and you have one of these out there, um, it's sitting there, it's software that's sitting on them and it's ready to go. Yeah, fantastic. Well, Matt, thanks a lot for uh, a bit of insight into our um, IEP collector and MPAT tool. Um, and uh, for our viewers, if you're interested in, in any of our tools and our products or in what one of the wonderful things that Matt and his guys can accomplish, uh, we're from 3DP.